Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise, and I welcome you back to the show. I thank you all for joining us here at Hope in Christ Ministries, where we take the message of the cross to the world through Christian literature. So tonight we have um, an awesome, awesome woman of God who... We have read, and we will be discussing with her, her one of her books that she has written, and it's Pastor Danielle Scroggins, and her book is called Extraordinary Love. But before we begin talking with Pastor Scroggins, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, Lord God, for where you are taking us and what you are doing through us. Father, we pray for those that are listening that they would hear something from you, Lord God. Help us, O oh God, to continue to speak your word of truth and love you, O oh God, and love others as you have loved us. Father, we bless your name and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So again, we are here to discuss Pastor Scroggins' um, book, Extraordinary Love, and I tell you, she has so many themes. Um, that she pulled out in this book. But before we begin, we want Pastor Scroggins to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Danielle Scroggins. I am the pastor of New Vessels Ministries in Shreveport. I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a daughter. And I am God's daughter, like first and foremost. I'm his daughter. So I'm here. Look, I, I don't have a long, long bio, Denise. I'm just Danielle. You just call me Danielle. Amen, amen. So we're going to jump right in. So um, Pastor Scroggins, the book Extraordinary Love was uh, awesome. And so um, there were several um, characters in the book. Um, Dwight was the main character. And um, you had Nathan, you had his brother Martez, and um, Jayla and her sister Jamicia and it was just mm-hmm. so many different um, characters but so many different people that could have been uh, realistic individuals, people that were um, real and so I'm, I'm grateful that you, you know, just pulled out the realistic side of these characters so um, my Amen. first question is to um, discuss again some of the themes. So one of the things that you, that was like, whoa, when I read it, I was like, okay, now, Lord, this one right here. Um, And it was the theme where Dwight was talking about um, the slave and master mentality in church. So I wanted you to kind of address um, that thing that, you know, he didn't go to church um, one of the that yeah. he was saying that was one of the reasons why he didn't go because of the slave and the master um, mentality in church. So I wanted to mm-hmm. that. you you know sometimes I can be writing and and then these things just start dropping out of nowhere. And Dwight, the character, is much like my son Dwight, but he 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 does go to church. He's a he's a church boy. But um, the, the, his personality and, and the, the way he viewed things was a lot like my son. And so I can remember when uh, our churches first started with the armor bearer situation. Like you, back in the day, you never heard of anybody armor bearer. You know, you never heard of the pastor. The pastor walked in. He had his own Bible under his arm, and he was he armored himself. You know, he had deacons to help with the things that needed to be helped with, and then he had the pastor's aide, which were women. They made sure that water was on the pulpit. And so then we, we changed. We, it, there was a turn, 
And the turn of centuries, then now the pastor had armor bearer. He walked in. His Bible walked in behind him in the arms of someone else. And then his water came in, and the armor bearer sat by the pastor. If the pastor needed something, he whispered to the armor bearer. The armor bearer goes to get it. And it was all, and it, and it, it just became like whatever you need, I got it. And 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 an assistant, uh, because that's exactly what an armor bearer is, an armor bearer assistant. Because it's not like we had it in, in, in Genesis where they held up the arms, you know, of Aaron. They, they, it wasn't like that. It became like, I'm going to do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. You need me, I'll do, I'll do, i do. And so that was one of the reasons why he said that. I, I don't do church because I don't like the way that people are being made to feel like they're, they're slaves and they got this master, and, and the master is the pastor, and you're taking it back for me, too far back for him to appreciate it because all he sees is someone fawning after the pastor. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I don't I, – it, it was not – it wasn't written to offend anyone who is an armor bearer because if you are an armor bearer in your church, it's an important job. As a pastor, I know I don't have an armor bearer, but I have uh, someone who's my right hand, and she knows me like uh, she lo- she knows me like I know me. Like she knows if I'm frustrated, she knows if I need uh, a towel or something. If I'm at church and I'm sweating and I don't, I, I left my towel in my office. She knows she's going to find me some paper towels. She's going to put some water up there. She's going to do these things for me out of her love for me, but not because I'm demanding her to do it or not because I took her through this whole entire class and said, I'm appointing you to this job. This is what you do. So I can appreciate her so much because I know that what she's doing for me is, uh, is because of her love for me and not because she's made to do these things. So that was 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 sort of what Dwight was feeling like, you know, these people are being made to do, and it's not because of their love that they're doing it from. It's because this is how the protocol has been set. And, you know, Denise, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So, like, for, for years I had never heard the word protocol in church. Like, it just wasn't a word that had been used. And and now when I'm 40, 46, so for the first years of my life, and I can say from the time I was, I've been in the church all my life, but just say when I knew, so say for about my, maybe about the time of seven or eight, till I was 27, 28, I had never heard the word protocol used in church. And then all of a sudden, this big influx of protocol. You got to have protocol. Now, I always had heard decent in order, but I had never heard protocol. So now you're, go- you're going into another whole type of situational. And so when I wrote it, I wrote that with that in my mind, how the church had changed. And it changed from just you going and you doing, if you're Ursula, you're doing your job. It changed to this is I, I Ursula because I love Ursula and not because somebody assigned me to it because I, I said, God, this is what I want to do. Now it, it, it turned, church has turned into an assignment age to where I'm the pastor, I assigned you to a a, a job, and I mandate that protocol goes the way it's supposed to go. So it, it just, for Dwight, that's a bit too much. You know, it's one thing to have this going on at work, but church and work should be separate. So I'm seeing too much of work in church. And so I just decide I don't want any parts of it. And whether we want to admit it or not, there are so many people right now that want nothing to do with the church because they see too much. Let me say that again. They see too much. Amen. Did I answer you? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, you did. And um, and we also have author Walletta um, on the line. And um, Walletta, would you like to add to that? I, I cannot think of anything that I can add to that. That is awesome. Amen, amen. So, amen. Um, and I thought um, it was awesome the way he presented it in the book and his thought process because a lot of people think that way. Um, I know um, just, for example, when I was doing praise on the praise and worship team, just the way, not necessarily for the pastor, but the way people view where you sit and, and they get upset if you sit in a certain spot. And I just, I was like, the way, I was like, hold on now. Just, nobody, <laughs> nobody on this road went to the cross for for us. So, I was struggling, you know, at first about mm-hmm. that. And, um, so that's, in, that's very important to point out. Another thing that you um, pointed out, like I said, was very realistic in the book, was the difference between how Dwight thought, which was um, him and the, the women and, and the sleeping with the different women and the church and all of that. And he said he didn't go to church so that he wouldn't see it which was like, whoa. Um, and then you have the opposite of that with Jayla and her sister with the celibacy. So I wanted to have you um, talk about that. Okay. So here, here, here we, we, we're, we live in a, in a time where we, we are teaching and we're preaching to women, you don't find a husband, you are found by a husband. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing and then obtain it favor with the Lord. We teach this. And so we teach that it's for you to wait to be found. And so a lot of these women who want husbands are going to church and they believe in God. God, I know that you can keep me. God, you can keep me. Keep me above all, Lord. Help me to deny my flesh. Help me to learn self-control. And, and, and they're, they're going to God and they're asking God these things, and they have a lot. They go to church. They go to work. They come home. Church, work, and home. And so then the case is, where are they going to be found at? They only go to church, work, and home. Surely there's no men at home. So then that leads to only two places, work and church. So a lot of single women go to church looking for men. And they know when a fresh man comes in the door. So you got 20 single women in this church, and Brother Nichols decides to bring his friend Dwight to church who is fine and sexy, looks good, driving a nice car. Out of those 10 women, somebody is going to have the gut of the nerves to walk up to him and say, hello, my name is Patrice, how are you? Because granted now, the church has become a pickup spot. We don't want to believe that. But ask a couple of single women that, at, that are at the church, are they waiting on him to walk through the doors of the church? And if you're telling them, go to church. And now pastors are like this. I don't want you going all the way over town. You got to be careful where you eat at. So you're telling them, I want you at your own church. You got praise and worship duty. You got usher duty. You need to be at your own church on Sunday. But there's no single men coming in this church. And when the single men do, he's almost attacked. So Dwight is saying, if, when I want to get it, if I want something, I just go to church. Because before I leave that church, I'm going to have a couple of women that's going to come up to me that's going to give me their they phone number. And I don't care what they say. When I was coming up, you know, uh, I married early at 17, so I left my daddy's house and went to my husband's house. And my husband was of the Church of God in Christ. I was Baptist. So everybody from my husband's family church and everywhere else around them, they wore long skirts and body socks. 
And me, the fashionista I was, said, you will never find me in no long skirt with no bobby socks and no kids. It ain't going to happen. I don't care how holy y'all pretending to be, it ain't going to happen. Because then I start to watch, and I saw too much. I saw whoremongers with long skirts and bobby socks. They looked a part of holiness, but they were acting like me or acting like folk I knew out in the street. So then now there's a problem. Because here I am, a young girl, and I'm seeing women who's supposed to be holy acting more like homongers. Now you surely ain't going to get me in that skirt. I'm going to wear what I want to wear. As the older I got, I learned that the skirt didn't make you holy. It was what's in you. It was that changed heart, a mind to serve God a heart to love God, and a flesh that was willing to bow down to the spirit of God that lived in you. Because we all know holiness without no man shall see the Lord. But just because we know it don't mean we act on it. And so here you have this young man saying, go to the church and get just as much stuff at the church. I'm just like the deacons that's in there. Matter of fact, I don't go because I know some of the deacons. If the pastor is right, then the deacon board is off the chain. If the pastor or her monger, the deacon board halfway right, but the pastor making sure he hit everything that's in there that's single. And, and, and we got to know that that's what's going down in the church. For so long, especially in the African-American church, we close our eyes to it. We close our eyes to the man of God sleeping with all the single women. We heard about it. The mother's boy heard about it. And so what they would do, tap the girl and say, you need to wear a longer skirt. But nobody ever told the pastor, God holding you accountable. Amen. I can remember being in the church watching the deacon. You knew as a teenager, I knew every deacon who had an extramarital affair and every woman he was messing with on the side. I knew it. All the other teenagers knew it. We all talked about it. Now, how you going to show us? How you going to show us God, but you living like the devil? How can you tell us anything and we know you ain't living right? But that's what happens. But we expect for the young girls to be chaste and to be pure. But we're not showing them that. So Dwight was saying, I could go to church and pick up anything just like that. That's why I don't even go. Because when I go, I'm just like fresh meat. That's basically what he was saying. All the single women, they see me, and I'm going to get phone numbers and everything before I leave there. And, and after I wrote that, Denise, that was one of the places where I cried. And I'm going to tell you why I cried. I cried because I could see it. I could see it from both sides. I could see that single girl that's been waiting on God to be found. She's been trying to do everything right. And she's coming to church feeling like, God, I know you're going to bless me one day. I'm just going to keep coming. I don't want to get my husband from the club. I would rather get him from the church. Because at least if he's going to church, I know he's on the same road as me. If I go to the club, I don't know if he's on the same road as me. I got to beg him to go to church. But if he already go to church, I ain't got to beg him on Sunday mornings to get up. He's going to beat me up. That's the kind of man I want. I want one that's going to beat me up. So I can see it from both sides. And then I can see this young man, because I, I, my son now, his name is Dwight, nice shoulders, broad buff. And you'd be surprised at the older women that say to me, ooh, I saw your son. Girl, that boy is fine. And I always say, and his mama still got a gun. He's grown. But it, to me, if a 46-year-old woman try to pull up on my son, 
who's 25 years old, just getting started with life. I got a problem with that. Amen. Amen. You, you see? So so that, let me, because we go on and on there, because it's a problem. It's one of the things that we've got to address in the church. And and, and, and another thing we got to do is, is we got to make the church invitable for single men. We got to make the, we, we got to bring them in. We got to go out there and get them. They still out there, and some of them are just waiting to get a holy pastor. They just waiting on a real man who who they don't have to see creeping. They want to see that you live in this thing. I tell Renard all the time. Renard is my husband. I say you never draw people unless they know that you can pray for them and get a prayer through. So be mindful, because we all are tempted. But when the tempter come to tempt you, be minded that some young man is in church because he think you holy. Be reminded. That's good. That's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. Um, like I said, thank you for sharing the um, the topics that um, a lot of people do do not talk about or they won't address, and you and you said it right in our community. For years, we have been, you know, kind of saying let it go. It's, it's you know, it's not for us, and and all these different things, and or we just pretend it's not happening. And um, I remember years ago, one of my students years. This has been so many years ago. One of my students asked me a question. She said, um, "Miss Walker, why do they um, church people tell us that we need to come to church and we need to be in church and we need to do this and do that?" And she said, "Because those same people, they don't. I don't see a difference in them when they're not in church. They doing this and doing that." She said, "So why do I need to go?" And I, I couldn't say anything. And so it is. Um, uh, as I was sharing earlier, that God is calling us back to righteousness, the church back to righteousness and holy living, and um, and it's too much that has been, has has been allowed to take place in the church. So before I mm. ask you um, the next question, uh, well, Leda, do you have a question for Pastor Scroggin? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. I, I don't know if it's my age or what it is, but I was not aware before I read this that there that um, well, you know, I knew people or young people went to church, and that's where they um, would seek um, my friends, boyfriends, girlfriends. But I, I just didn't see it the way it was written in the book, and I just appreciate the way that it was written in there. Um, because if I, I know I'm not the only one that did not see it like that, and it's and now that I know um, that it, people have that mindset, that young people have that mindset, mindset, I can talk to um, the young people in my life and let them know. You know, this is that's just enlightening. It was very enlightening. I appreciate you writing it, and, and bless you for doing that. Praise God, praise God. You know, some of the things I be thinking, I be saying, Lord, you're going to have me to, to say that. And, and I promise I fight. I fight back and forth with him, you know, because he be like, this this how you going to do it. And I be like, no, I don't want to do it that way. You know, I don't want nobody fucking mad at me. Because people get mad at you when you start exposing things, you know. And uh, and especially the devil, he's the first one that gets mad at you. Because if you expose this and then a young woman get it and she'd be like, okay, Lord, I get this. I get that, that you know, on your ground, that that's your platform. I, I don't come there to find a man. I come here, I go to church to hear because faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God. That's the number reason why number reason number one reason why I go to worship. I go to worship to build my faith. Because faithfulness does not please God, but faith does. And a lot of us old heads, we got that faithfulness thing on lock. But we don't have any faith. Soon as we ain't got no money, we start falling apart. 
So we're trying to teach them how to be faithful but not have faith. And this generation want to see faith instead of faithfulness. Because you got a lot of them that stay at home, don't go to church, might catch Bishop Jakes or somebody else. I just heard the numbers the other day. It says Bishop Jakes has over 70,000 e-members. Did y'all hear me? My Lord. 70,000 e-members. This is folks who just sitting at home going to church online. Because I would rather go online and see this man. I don't know nothing about his lifestyle. All I know is he got his wife, Miss Sarita. She sit up there. She's pretty. His daughter sit up there. He gives a word that attacks the enemies that are attacking me. So all I want is this word. I don't want to know what who's sleeping with who in the church. I don't want to know if the pastor is, is out there, if he's out there bad. I just don't even want to know. So because I don't want to know, I'm not going to get that close to him and the church. I just rather sit at home and, and watch church online. And so we, we got to get to the point to where we we teach that. It is impossible to please God without faith. Because if you stand at home, I'm going to church every Sunday, and I'm faithful with this thing, but I don't have no faith. And you stand at home every Sunday, but your faith's so strong because not only are you reading your word, you in this word, you playing this word online, and not only do you go to Bishop Jake's on Sunday, you go around, you go to Houston, to Pastor Keon, you flip around, you go to to uh, do, E. Dewey Smith in Atlanta, in Georgia, you flipping around all Sunday long. You going to 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 uh, to uh, Mer- William Murphy in Atlanta. You all day long on Sunday. You just flipping from church to church, but you getting word after word after word from some strong, powerful men of God and women of God. And your faith level so high and, and look like every time you ask God for something, that it's happening for you. And I'm going to church every Sunday wondering why it's not happening for me, but everything seems to be happening for you, and you won't never leave your house on a Sunday morning. Case in point, did y'all see with Dwight and his neighbor? Mm-hmm. Miss Thane, you know, she, she was watching him. He a young man. So she watching everything going in and out of his house. And the very Sunday, she keeps telling him, you need to come to church. You need to go to church. You need to go to church. And the very Sunday he gets up to go to church, she outside tending in her yard because she ain't going to church. <laughs> and he like, mm, so what, what you doing this Sunday? So I didn't caught you slipping. You know, you too worried about my business, and here I am finna go to the house of the Lord, your church, and you ain't even there. And if you notice, she got in that house. I didn't write all of that, but the next thing you know, when Dwight is at church singing, she some rolls behind him getting his attention to let him know she there. So that's what we have to be mindful of as old heads, that these young folks, they need us. They 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 need they need someone they need someone who's showing them I'm living this word. And it ain't just about being faithful. It ain't about being faithful, it's about having faith. And I'm gonna show you my faith by my work. Not my work. Because I'm faithfulness with no faith. But the works I do because I do have faith. Amen. 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 Um, what a powerful, powerful word. Um, and you're, you're right. So many things that we don't talk about. Um, a lot of our children are watching and wondering, like, what, I don't understand what's going on with church, you know, because um, it looks like it's church. It looks right, but um, I can I can attest to the fact that um, I felt like I was just doing 
things in church that for many, many, for many years, I felt like I was just doing in church, but not being in relationship with God. I was singing on the praise team. I was working in the youth ministry. I was doing all kind of stuff, and, and I knew I had accepted Christ, but I felt like I wasn't close to God until I went and I sat in my office on the floor and just opened the Bible and just I, and I just began to say, get me to Jesus. I don't want all the fluff. Get rid of all the fluff, Lord. Just get me to Jesus. And so mm. um, and a lot of our young people want Jesus. They're looking for Jesus. They're tired of the fluff in church. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They're tired of the, even some of the older people, not just the younger people, but um, I, I look at my husband, He and I know he loves the Lord, but he he's he tired of the stuff he sees in church. And um, mm-hmm. and so a lot of the men, like you said, we got to bring the men in. And um, it's a lot mm-hmm. of us, a lot of women in church. And then, like I say, and one of the things I started noticing is that church has become a business instead of the house of the Lord and where Jesus went in kicking over tables um, when they were doing the things, some of the things that happen in, in our churches now. And so thank you for um writing and, and, and being uh, realistic in the characters. Um, one of the things I noticed was that um, Dwight, what came to my mind was King Solomon. Um, when I thought about Dwight, I don't know why King Solomon came to my mind, but <laughs> him and those women. And, um, but then when he mm-hmm. met Jayla, when he laid eyes on Jayla, um, she was she was different. She was different, and um, and then the fact that he had done those things that he'd done, and now she was um, the a woman who was celibate and um, wanted the husband that God was sending to her. And so um, I thought that was awesome the way you painted that picture, and even um, realizing this is the woman who God has touched. So there's no need to look any further. Um, so I don't know if you want to kind of talk about that real quick. Um, it was it, his conversation with God, you know, and, and Dwight is that. He's the epitome of someone who knows him, but do, but just like your husband, tired of all of the fluff, you know. I, I have a habit when I go to church, when I go to different churches, I see so much. And, and a lot of things I see in the spirit. And and a lot of things I see in the natural, I, I see. And so I have a habit when praise and worship is going forth and, and when we're worshiping God, I close my eyes. And my kids would say, Mom, why do you close your eyes? I said, because I don't want to see nobody or nothing but the feet of Jesus. So in my mind, I'm at the throne and I'm bombarding my way with my worship to move the angels out of the way that are crying, holy, holy, holy. And I want to be at the feet of the Lord. So when I'm singing in my worship and I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm shabbatting God, I'm closing my eyes because I'm closing out everything that's around me. I don't have to know who's next to me. I don't have to see who's singing. I don't have to see who's leading the song. All I want to see is the feet of Jesus. I just want to just lay there at his feet. I needed to say that. I don't know why, but the Lord just brought it to me, and I needed to say that. Now, when we think about, you know, a man, men are, men have sex with multiple women. Women, we, we sex is, is emotional for us. But men, it's, it's physical, but it's really emotional for them too. They just hadn't taken the time to realize it. And so when they do take the time to realize that it's, it's just as much spiritual as it is emotional for me, then they get particular about who they take to bed. And so now Dwight is at a place in his life where uh, things are looking good. He, he has his own home, nice car, business. Uh, just bought a business, just bought a, a new complex downtown. Things are looking up. But the one thing he's missing is what his brother has, Martez has in Selena. His friends, Nathan, then married, Regina. And so now he's just kind of like, and the one woman he did kind of peep at, 
Jacob has got Jamesia. So now he like, wow, you know? And then he sees Jayla. Chance meeting, she just happened to be the one to be sent to help him get to where he should be. But when she walks up on him, there's something instantly that grabs him concerning her. So he still doesn't know, so he goes home, and now I'm having conversation with God. And God says, and I'm saying to God, Lord, how I know? I can't even test the good. You, 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 you don't want me, you know, I can't test. I don't know. How I know this girl is the one, you know? And then the Lord began to talk to him. And I believe that that conversation is one of the most pivotal conversations that I have ever written about. Because here you have this young man, this young man in his home, and he takes the time to talk to God, but he also takes the time to hear from God. And so he hears, go get your Bible. So he go gets his Bible, and the Lord says, go here. Psalm, go Genesis, go here. And he just, it, it, these scriptures just dropping on him, and he knows it's God talking. So he just get these scriptures and he go find them and he reads them. And he's like, wow, she, she's the one. You know, like, God is confirming this thing. This is the one. So then he goes into his bedroom, the room that he slept with so many women, countless of women. And now he's ashamed to even be in there because he realized how much baggage has been left in his own bedroom. Ooh. I I I talk, I I wrote a book. My first book, the first book I ever wrote was entitled "Not Until You're Ready," and I talked about how when we sleep with people, and I was fresh in ministry then, but the Lord had shown me something that I didn't quite understand, but I, I knew just enough about it to write about it. But how when we sleep with people and we pick up spirits and 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 we start going around doing things that we wouldn't ordinarily do but we don't understand that we've already connected ourselves and we've married somebody because back in the old days, the ceremony wasn't important as the going into. The going into is what established you as husband and wife. And so, you know, now he, he gets it like, wow, my body is connected to all of these different women. And he gets this shoebox where he got all these different pictures and pictures of these women naked and all kinds of because we see we're living in another type of world now. You know, back in the day you, you didn't even my mom used to say, Don't even bring a if a boy comes to your house they couldn't sit nowhere but in the living room. Because if you brought him into your bedroom, he could tell everybody what's in your bedroom and say that he had you in your bedroom and go back and tell the whole school what color best spread you got, what kind of pictures you had on your wall. Because she was a mother, and that's how she was thinking at the time. But now, Mama, oh, they got cameras now. They can come in and take pictures of all kinds of stuff. And now women are sending pictures of all kinds of things. They sending pictures of their body. And don't think no shame in it. They the snapshot, you know. They think that that I was just reading like if a parent want to see uh, some of the worst sites for your children to be caught up in sexual crimes or sexual situations, Snapchat is one of them. Because you can take the picture and then it disappears, but it never really disappears. Because if somebody else got another phone, they can screenshot the picture and then there it goes all over the world. So the world is so open now. Demons are so open now. Uh, demonic presence is, is so forceful in this age and time. Until now he realized all this stuff I got up here is not conducive to me wanting and desiring a healthy marriage or a healthy woman or being a healthy man for a healthy woman. So it's time to get rid of it. So he sits down at his, on his bed, and he cuts pictures one by one as if to cut it away from his spirit. It was the cutting away he was doing. And, 
And I, I, I needed to share that because a lot of times we want to be married, single women, but we, we are married already. We're just like the woman at the well. You know, you've had five husbands, and the one you got is not your own because we've had five bedroom partners, and we've been married spiritually to each one of them. And we got to go back and say, God, divorce my spirit. Divorce. God, I need you to do a divorce. I need you to divorce me from every man that I've ever slept with. I need you to take me back to the place, God, to where I was pure. Oh, my God. I need to go back to the place, God, to where when I'm found, God, that he won't see the dirt that was on me, but he'll see the glory that resides within me, and that glory is you, God. Amen. 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 This is awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I just have a couple other questions for you, um, Pastor. Um, but before I ask you those questions, um, well, Lady, did you have any other questions for her? No, I don't. Thank you. That's just a mighty word right there. That was mighty. I've been taking so many notes. I got to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, that word is woo woo. Um, I love listening to you when you begin to um, speak and God begin to speak through you. Um, so my one of my last questions is, um, is there a sequel? So that's one. That's one of my questions. Is there a sequel that after this one? Well, a- after Extraordinary Love is Extravagant Love. And it's, it's uh, when they come together. Because everyone looked at Jacob's and Demetria's story and they was like, it's not through. What happened, you know? And I, I got some fours for that one because they felt like they wanted to see them get married. Well, you have to get through Dwight and Jayla and then to the last book. In the last book, you have the two women on the cover, uh, Jayla and Jamesia. And so it's an extravagant affair. So that, that you will see them get married. And... um then in this last, the Power Series, Rebirth, you will see Jayla and Jamesia in a role now to where they are, they're, they're, they're young adults and married, and now they're talking or they're, they're spearheading with their past coat with their first lady, Destiny Strong. They're spearheading the youth, the young adult uh, classes. And so that's going to be very interesting. So the Power Series Rebirth is almost a connection to the E-Love Series because these are all people in the same church, Faith Temple Cathedral. So now it it starts to just expand, and you'll see more of them. You'll see them peek their heads in uh, this next series as well. But book five, is really the, the closing out of Jacob and Demetria, Dwight and Jayla story, book five is. And then you'll go, you'll move into the, the uh, rebirth series, and you'll see, the, you'll see their heads and their hands in that. Amen. amen. And um, my other question for you, is my last question is how can people connect with you? Oh, you can always go to danielscroggins.com. I'm on Facebook, uh, Danielle Scroggins or Arthur Danielle Scroggins. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, Pastor Danielle. And um, you can email me at info at danielscroggins.com. So in any one of those ways, if you get in contact with me, I'm there, and and I check these places regularly. Not that I want to. Ooh, God, sometimes I dread. Sometimes I just, you know, you you. I think about before there was social media. You never really know what good books was out until somebody um, 
found, somebody said, girl, I just got a book by Terry McMillan. And then everybody would flood to the store to buy it because I live in Louisiana. So it wasn't like it was on television or no promotion on TV. Don't really know who would have been the first one to get the book. But once it got out in the black community that the book was out, everybody flooded to the book. Now we have all these social media sites where you can go on there and put the book out there, and it almost seems like people still don't get the book. You know, uh, someone told me that it takes them, it takes your book to be in front of someone 21 times before they even think about buying it. And they're like, what? Because if I see something new out there by an author that I like, I instantly just go and pick it up, you know. But um, I'm somewhere in, in the web zone. I, I don't necessarily want to be all the time, but I make sure that I am so that I can connect to those readers that want to connect to me. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Pastor. And um, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, um, Author Waletta. Um, done as well to awesome women of God. And um, Waletta, did you have any final comments before we pray out? Just, I just wanted you to know I really enjoyed the book. I enjoyed listening to you, and I appreciate um, you, Pastor Denise, making this um, possible for us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We're going to go thank ahead and you, pray. Thank you, my Father, we thank you for your woman of God. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your truth. Um, that you desire truth in the inward parts, that we may be delivered, we may be healed, we may be set free. Father, I thank you for your just being you, God. We pray and ask, oh God, that you are blessed. You know, women of God, we thank you, oh God, for subscribing, that you continue to use her to speak what others won't speak, Father God, and that people, women, and men alike would be healed and set free. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And thank you all for listening and tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. Have a phenomenal week.